diet doesn't matter if you're outside and you're a sand rat. I know, I know, you're not a sand rat. But just like a sand rat, you're biologically wired to be diurnal. That is, you do in the day and sleep at night. Now, this pattern of behavior is not what is seen in your typical lab rat. Lab rats come from nocturnal stock. That is, they sleep in the day and do at night. It's a subtle difference, but it is a biggie. Clearly, what happens to a sand rat is likely to be more relevant to you than what happens to a lab rat. Humans are wired to be diurnal, even if you think you're a night owl. Now, you might be thinking, hello, why aren't we studying sand rats more? Well, the short answer is sand rats, along with other rodents that are diurnal, don't do well in labs. When the little guys get popped in a cage and fed standard rat chow, they get fat, become diabetic, and many of them actually pass to the other side. As I said, they don't do well. But this doesn't happen if they're kept outside. This is what a group of Israeli researchers recently discovered. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we find out how to stop death by obesity in sand rats and quite possibly humans too. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, happy, healthy sand rats potter around in hot, dry places in North Africa and the Mediterranean, feeding on a low-calorie saltbush by day. And if they're brought into the lab and fed saltbush, they don't seem to suffer from all the metabolic mayhem. So the take-home message, for sand rats at least, is... Don't overeat. It makes you fat and sick, which is the same message we humans hear from health gurus all the time. Remember, standard lab rat chow is not considered a bad diet. Well, the human minders don't consider it bad. Who knows what the rats think? <laughs> Let's get back to this study. In this study, the sand rats were not on diet. They sat around in cages eating standard rat chow, but they remained perfectly healthy. The only thing that was different, the sand rats were outside, not inside. Inside is the problem. So what is the difference between being outside and inside? Well, a gazillion things. Inside, there are no bugs, no predators, no weather, and no light. Okay, there is light, but the light is different. Now, in this study, the researchers went to great lengths to ensure that the timing of the light was the same for the sand rats inside the lab as well as outside the lab. They did this by adjusting when the lights went on so as to perfectly match the daylight cycle outdoors. This meant at the start of the study, both groups of sand rats experienced 10 hours and 40 minutes of day. And by the end of the study, some nine weeks later, the day length had increased to 12 hours and 39 minutes. So day length was not different, but light intensity was. Light bulbs are not the same as sunshine. No matter how bright the lights are inside, they don't compare to the amount of light you experience outside, even on a cloudy day. Now for the sand rats, this is an issue. When they tracked the animals' behaviors, they found inside sand rats lost track of time. Instead of eating in the day and sleeping at night, they did whatever. This can be seen here. The yellow shows what the outside sand rats were up to, while the gray shows how they behaved inside. 
You can see they became couch potatoes and ate more dinner, particularly in the wee hours of the night. Now, interestingly enough, they didn't actually eat more food. Basically, they became nocturnal and suffered the consequences, becoming fatter and less glucose tolerant. Nocturnal humans are common. Despite being wired to be diurnal, many people act like they're nocturnal. Maybe this is not all that surprising. Humans are living under lab conditions. In fact, we often jokingly refer to our lives as being a rat race in modern societies. Food is available at Libertin 24-7, and we control our ambient temperature and light exposure. And when it comes to light exposure, we've got it completely back to front. We're exposed to low levels of light during the day and relatively high levels at night. So, can we learn anything from our sand rat cousins? Well, the plea from these researchers is, more research should be done on diurnal creatures. And I wholeheartedly agree. But in the meantime, if you want better body chemistry, you need to be mindful of your diurnal wiring. Make it a goal to get out of the lab and live more outside. You might just find what you eat doesn't matter quite as much thanks to better body chemistry. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who feels they're genetically predisposed to put on weight? Share this video with them so they understand the importance of living in rhythm with the sun. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.